What is the car that we've got? So yeah, we are. So we're in a, a different player house from uh, last week, and we have got a Jeep Grand Cherokee Track Hawk. Uh, he read from the top of the screen. <laughs> he applied one of the new off-road uh, body kits that we have brought to the game in Force Horizon 4. I am reliably informed there are about 12 of them in the game that you can apply to uh, some of the more extreme off-road uh, vehicles that are great for, for the world of Force Horizon. Um, and Andy is sporting one of them. Uh, now, as he leaves his house um, with little care for property damage um, <laughs> and we we are in uh we're in the highlands we're in the yeah, the yeah. north of the map which we haven't really shown anyone uh, yet uh in an area of the world that's kind of bits of beautiful scotland right it's an incredible uh, looking part of the world amazing vista so it was a real obvious choice for us in terms of location selection but there's also a place called rannock moor which uh, again is another scottish location so this is a, a bit of a mashup of those two areas uh, which we've, we've sort of selected the best bits from and created this section of the map it looks uh, it looks stunning yeah and also you'll notice we wanted to show you guys something about the the verticality that we've hinted wow. at before when it comes to this particular part of the uh, well, this particular game, especially versus what we had in Horizon 3. So we really listened to the community. We, we knew that the guys wanted something that had a bit more verticality associated with it. Uh, that's a barn find right thinking, there yeah, as well. No, I was just thinking... um, spoilers, yeah, that's where that guy is. This, this guy, this guy, guy yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I know our fans have been uh, asking for more mountains, no, more uh, mountain roads, switchbacks, mm. and certainly this game uh, delivers them, which is, which is wonderful. Well, it's great with off-road vehicles as well. And I remember last week he promised something. You said it's going to happen, all right, and it's taking a look at the world map for the first time because like, you see it, it's a huge world. Like, can you talk us It through? is a huge world, yeah. So we're going to sh uh, show by popular demand uh, the world map. So that's where we are, sort of north, east of the world. Um, and as we move south, we're down into the sort of lake district, mm -hmm. which we showed you quite a lot of uh, last week. You can see, I think this is a pretty full map. I think I'm right in saying that we've kind of unlocked a lot of stuff. Uh, that's on uh, on the map there, and people will see, I think, the things that they're looking out for. I know a lot of people were asking about uh, the Goliath and whether it was going to return. Um, if you if you notice there, uh, it has. Um, a really cool thing I think we've done this time is, as well as the Goliath, we have a bunch of really massive routes. There's the Gauntlet, there was the, um, I've forgotten the name of the other one, the Titan is there as well. So there's lots of uh, really big routes for people who like big routes in Horizon games, which is great. And there's Edinburgh. And Edinburgh, well. yeah. 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 What should we say? One final look. Which which is your favourite part of the world? Oh, um, do you know what? I actually really do love Edinburgh. I, I know we've talked about showing it later on. Um, we're kind of saving that for a bit because it's it's a real special part of the map. There it is. It's the, especially it's a nice little tease. Especially at night. It's it's a real it's a real visual feast for the eyes. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the visual tree. Yeah. Is there <laughs> lots of trees? There are actually not that many trees. <laughs> for like me and someone from Britain to kind of see the blue signs. Yes, right. the, go, the go really fast signs. Um, <laughs> so that there, yeah, there is something really eerie actually for, for a Brit going down this stretch of road because it does feel very authentic, especially with all the um, average speed camera signs across the motorway, which is something that other British people will, will recognise. Um, but obviously we're going to blast past those way faster than 60 miles an hour, which is something I've always wanted to do in real life, but obviously never do. <laughs> a very responsible person. We've got all the kind of like the details on the motorway as well. Autumn, it's obviously so, so, so different to what we saw in summer last week. What kind of other changes are there in the world? Because you did promise us mud. Oh yes, yeah. So actually, um, we're we're hightailing it down the motorway towards um, a four x four adventure park, which is in in the game world, uh, and it's a, a real sort of showcase what we've been doing with uh, deformable surfaces and deformable mud, especially. Um, so yeah, so we're, uh, we're going to be showing off exactly how that changes up some of the, the driving experience there as well as the visuals. And we are now getting to the, the mud tracks. Here you go, yeah. yeah. This is it. So you'll start to see all the other players tearing the place up uh, and really starting to, yeah, make it turn into a, a mud fest. Just, just look at that, the sink, I sink into that mud. Um, so can you talk us through a little bit about the, this, this area? Sure, yeah. So this is, this is inspired from a, a real-life um, 
off-road adventure park. It's definitely one of the most fun areas in the game, I think, to, to play those um, playground arena type game modes like Infected and King, um, as well as being a, a real cool looking place as well, especially at, at night. What can you do in this shared world and what we see? Yeah, so right now we can see uh, the guys are connected to a shared world. As I said, these are some of our, some of our team upstairs are helping us out demo this today. Uh, when the game launches uh, it, on October 2nd, you'll be able to join with up to 72 people on a server. We don't quite have that many here now. Driver tiles were great in races, and you can still absolutely race against driver tiles in races. But when you're in the, when you're in the open world, um, there's an emergent fun and a character that real people can bring that um, you just you just can't create with an AI. So there's there's that auto ghost feature, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So Ben, if you want to touch that. Yeah, cool. So um, auto ghost is this really awesome way of just making our online world feel kind of super welcoming to yeah. everybody. Because one of the things that is not nice when you go online is people crashing into you, is kind of people griefing you if you're trying to be still or take a photo or something like that. So what Auto Ghost does is it says if somebody is not your friend, is not in your convoy and they, you kind of haven't allowed it, they can't grief you at all. You would just pass straight through. Can you turn off Auto Ghost thing in a private lobby? You can convoy up with people you know mm -hmm. and have collisions turned on. So mm -hmm. you can still get those crashes if you kind of want? Absolutely, want. yeah. And uh, instantly everyone will get taken out of your world and eventually replaced with driver tiles start to spawn in and this is so that's it that's just yeah. kind of like you're now on offline mode yeah there's no waiting around for it it's just brilliant yeah there and done no, no loading screens no cinematics or anything you can see a, a driver tiles uh, just there up the road uh, if andy quickly goes back and again reselects horizon life mm -hmm. um it will find him a session this takes around 10 seconds or so so if andy just drives around now um once once that's connected we should see all this all andy's friends who we were just playing with um pop back into the world which is great for things like Forza Thun Live, where the type of challenge is changing all the time. Yeah. Um, so obviously we had speed challenges at the start there, and now we've got a skills one where I can tell Andy's uh, conscious that he's going to end up flipping his other car, so he's come for something that's a bit more planted. He's this thing. He's, he's right, risen to the challenge. Yeah. Right, I, I'm just going to see what the chat are thinking. Are they feel, feeling confident in Andy, or are they kind of like, feeling a bit as if he's, he's going to crash? I think he'll miss the jump. Right, that is the big part of this. Well, we might miss the jump. He's taking it safe, so he's oh. going for the <laughs> smash everything kind of earning a skill chain. The group is actually doing this really quickly as well. In terms of skill chains, key point is to <laughs> not let it bank, which Andy just got away with there, because the, the higher you get your multiplier, the, the bigger it will be, and you want to bank that massive skill chain at the end. The, the probably there, we go. Right, there we go. So that is the Forza Thun Live yeah. event, which is like, they, they happen every hour, um, yep. All week round, every season. Every season, every hour on the hour. And uh, it's completely synced worldwide as well. So, like, when you see it on your server, every player in the entire world will see that Forza Thun Live fires at the same time as well. What happens here is every, every hour the server says, if anybody wants to take part in this, get over here, you get the little message, you can set a route there, um, and a kind of radius appears on the map. Yep. And anyone who turns up is <coughs> grouped together and they immediately then compete to do a kind of cooperative challenge with three stages. Um, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail when it starts, but if I go into the kind of rest of Forza Thun, so we've got daily challenges which are like, like the ones you remember from Horizon 3, so kind of bite-sized simple things like earn three stars on a speed trap or um, earn 100,000 points on a drift zone, right? really simple ways that we just kind of reward you for coming back to the game that day and give you um, a reward for it. And then the weekly ones where you can think of it like a car story. So yeah. we get you to get into a particular really cool car. Um, maybe it's a car that's been in films or it's something that's kind of brand new and everybody's loving it. And then we give you a bunch of challenges and we'll extend the gameplay out there kind of half an hour plus. Uh, but we're actually getting up to a bit that I think everyone gets really excited about in Horizon 4. It's a big part of the game, showcases. Yeah, certainly. So we've started up at the top of the mountain. Um, as we saw, and we're coming down into this beautiful valley. Big slow-mo jump there towards the viaduct. Um, we had a thrown hovercraft and this wonderful Toyota truck down I think the mountain. We've all so, thought at one point, what, what would it be like to race a, a hovercraft? Exactly. Down the and, exactly. Uh, and now we, now we get to find out. So in here, which is the screen that we call My Horizon Life, yep. this tracks all your progress across the whole game. So um, 
And one of those is a photographer like campaign. So it's basically a, a series of challenges and rewards uh, which, which reward you for being a great photographer. So you, you take photos, you upload them, other people download them and like them, and then you basically get get rewards in game and your challenges and stuff to do in game. And this screen, My Horizon Life, like each one of these little tiles represents a, a sort of mini campaign that you can take part in. So if you want to play the game and all you want to do is playground games modes, which is like our fun, uh, like king and infected type modes, you, there's actually a campaign for that, and you can just play the game that way, and you'll still be able to level up and get all and progress like, and progress exactly. Yeah, because the, the Ultimate Edition comes out on the 28th of September. It's got four days early access, doesn't it? So there's early access, yeah, for the Ultimate Edition. And then the game itself comes out on the 2nd of October. Which is also available on, on Xbox Game Pass. Game Pass on the same day, 